Perfect. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. Today, we have trailed a very trusted partner of Strategies Group providing solutions for accounts payable automation. Uh, before I hand this over to Daniel with our team and um, Adam and Karen at Trailed, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping things. I know everybody's been through tons of webinars, but um, feel free to put any questions that you have in the Q&A box at the bottom, um, and we'll get those answered at the end of this call. And then we will also be recording this webinar so we can we can pass it on to your team if you need to reference anything or if you would like to share it to anybody else. Um, and if, like Adam said, if you have any questions about personalized demos or um, any questions about Trailed and Acumatica, feel free to let any of us on the call know. And we're happy to answer those questions. Um, Adam, you can take it away. Perfect. Thanks, Selena. And thanks to okay. Daniel and the team at Strategies Group for, for coordinating this. And I really appreciate everyone carving some time out of their day to uh, to come and see and understand the trailed solution and how it works specifically within the construction edition of Acumatica. So um, my name's Adam. I'm one of the co-founders here at Trailed. As you can tell from the, the really funny accent, I am originally from Melbourne, Australia, from the other side of the world. I did spend nearly half of my career working for Acumatica and their OEM research seller in the Australian region, MYOB. Um, the platform has very much been designed uh, through and through um, with Acumatica in mind. It was built around an Acumatica business um, and specifically around the construction segment. So you'll see a lot of, a lot of um, uh, nuances that are related to your sort of business and your sort of setup um, that will be very interesting to you guys as we go through the the solution. But at a very, very high level, um, obviously, Karen Donahoe has also joined me. She's got years of experience implementing and supporting Acumatica sites all over the globe, specifically in North America. And she's joined us as well on as our director of partnerships uh, across the North American region. So the agenda for today, what we're going to go through, um, what is trailed, obviously, how are we different from other AP solutions? Um, obviously, we're very much construction specific and, and built around construction, but specifically what features are different? Why choose trailed um, even over you know this, the, the basic out of the box AP document recognition offered by Acumatica? What are some of the accounts payable challenges you and your organization are facing in the construction space, um, whether it be with subcontracts, whether it be with payments to subcontracts or retainage, um, the benefits of AP automation and the return on investment you can get from that, the impact of invoice fraud, errors and mistakes that can happen to, you know, we can see more of that impact throughout the mid-market with, you know, smarts and AI, um, you know, tackling some of the invoices and things that are coming into our organization. Uh, Daniel from Strategies Group and myself are going to go through a live product demo, everything from the Acumatica side of raising a purchase order, receiving inventory, raising a subcontract PO, having all of that information then feed in real time into trailed. Um, and obviously the invoices being received, either supplier invoices or the subcontractor invoices, and then showing how that two-way and three-way matching process works and the and the managing by exception and the variance controls and all the sorts of cool stuff that the platform can do whilst integrated with Acumatica. And then we're going to run through the customer testimonials, just give you an overview of what our customers have to say in the Acumatica space. And then we'll open it up at the end for questions and answers about the platform. So many of you jumping on the call today will be wondering to yourself, well, what is Trailed? Like, what's the purpose of this software and why is it important for what I do in my business in construction and with Acumatica? So Trailed is really designed with two key facets in mind. It's designed around AP efficiency and financial control. With those two key areas, it's designed about how can we make your process as streamlined and as easy as possible, but also make sure that the things that are going through are accurate and correct. So making sure that any issues around excess supplier charges or duplicate invoices or duplicate payments or even you know a mismatch to what the subcontract is actually completed on a site versus what they've actually invoiced you for is actually flagged. And those anomalies are analyzed and flagged to the right person to make a decision at the right time. And so underneath this entire platform is a security network to help 
um, protect the business, mainly from supplier mistakes and errors that can happen, but also from things like business email compromise, a huge issue in the mid-market um, around manipulation of invoices on their way into the business, supplier impersonation, social engineering, and even insider fraud. So these are some of the key features and functionalities on the table on the right-hand side that you'll see trailed offers within the specific construction space that are not offered by the core Acumatica solution or even in general other AP products out there in market. So again, the depth of integration with Acumatica is key. We have over 350 Acumatica sites using the platform. Um, and obviously that, that has continued to grow based on our depth of, of compatibility with Acumatica and real-time integration. So you're probably asking yourself, you know, these are sorts of the sorts of challenges that you may be experiencing in your business. In, in the construction space, we see a lot of, you know, printing and filing of AP documents, storing them in, in local filing cabinets or big piles on people's desks. Um, we still see a lot of companies having to manually enter the AP invoices into Acumatica, making that a timely data entry process for the business. Um, you're having to still manually match the AP invoices um, to both purchase orders and purchase re purchase receipts, making sure that the actual inventory items and the information that's been actually delivered on site makes sense and has actually been accounted for when you receive the invoice from the supplier even to the point of chasing up receipts or managing subcontracts, you know, have, has the actual job, the work on the job been completed? Has it been completed at 100%? We've been invoiced for 100% of the job, but actually only 25% has actually been completed. So what are we going to do in terms of that retainage and in, in, in terms of those payments? Trailed helps you manage all of that, even to the point of where the invoices and understanding where those invoices should be coded. So whether it to be to a particular project, a project task, a cost code, uh, a general ledger code or a sub account, it's understanding and learning what's normal for your business based on understanding the, the machine learning uh, and populating that data accordingly. It's also starting to understand, you know, where the invoices need to go when there's an exception, you know, who needs to review it, who needs to approve it. And that's based on our multi-level approval hierarchy and approval rules. And then there's the, the part around, well, I just need to find something, an invoice or, or a purchase order or a subcontract really quickly and easily and I need it to be, at the, you know, to be accessible. And so today, a lot of people struggle with that. And because Trailed is mobile enabled, you can be on any device. You can search for a supplier. You can pull up all of the information in the one screen, the invoice, the subcontract, the PO, the inventory, everything's available for you there. And it tells you if there's a variance or an issue or a problem, and you can manage it accordingly. And then there's the payment side of things. You know, you're sitting there with a with a batch payment at the end of the process. You might have a, a million dollar pay run or you might have a $500,000 pay run and you're trying to analyze which invoices are correct and which ones aren't uh, before you actually process the payment. And Trailed has a whole executive review dashboard around that to try and give you comfort and visibility as to what's been automated in the process, what's been approved in the process, what's been matched in the process and what may be an anomaly that you need to take care of. And in saying all of that, with those challenges come the automation benefit of introducing something like Trailed. So if we look at an AP automation tool that's specific to the construction industry, we see um, that the IRS has done a study. So they did a study last year that looked at the average cost per document to process it through a business. So that takes into account the overhead cost in terms of salary, the operational cost in terms of getting invoices keyed in, matched to purchase orders, matched to subcontracts, making sure they're indexed, they're available and being keyed into the, to the accounting system. All of that overhead cost approximately $26 per document. When you take into account a system like Trailed, you're looking at reducing that cost by up to $19 per invoice. So a cost saving of about, you know, saving it's costing you about $7 per invoice, at, you know, introducing something like Trailed. So if you multiply that saving by approximately 300 invoices, let's just say on average, you're looking at saving, you know, nearly $70,000 a year for an average mid-market construction business. Now, if you think to yourself, instead of having someone manually key in the data, manually match the subcontracts, manually match the purchase orders and make sure the inventory has been received, if that all became systematic, what would your business do with that extra time and resource? What could you do to help grow your business and future-proof it with the resources that you have rather than putting it on mundane man manual data entry processes? So that's the benefits from an automation point of view. And then there's the question about fraud. And this has been, this is really close to my heart because this is the reason that Trailed actually was established. Unfortunately, my family business were, were operating on Acumatica 
and we were running a large agriculture business, a very much a mid-market agriculture business. And unfortunately, we did have a business email compromise attack where we ordered normal, um, we ran a poultry and, and pork business um, where we supplied the supermarkets and we ordered pallets and pallets uh, from, a, from a normal supplier that would always deal with. And this supplier had their email compromised on its way into our business. And we had three accounts payable cl clerks that dealt with our volume. We, we processed about three and a half to $4 million of AP a week. Um, and we were obviously a high turnover, um, low margin business. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately or unfortunately, fortunately, the AP clerk did pick up that the payment details had changed and they called the supplier. Unfortunately, they called the supplier using the phone number on the document. And it actually went through to the fraudster. Little did they know they thought they were speaking to the supplier. They said, no, this is correct. It's our Columbus, Ohio office, um, not our New York-based office. Please update the payment details accordingly. And that was for a relatively small invoice of only $3,000. But what happened in that chain of events is the payment details got updated in Acumatica. Then the next invoice came through a couple of days later for $30,000. And it got paid because the information was updated. And then an invoice came through a week later for another $300,000 and it also got paid. And then another invoice came through about a day later for $3 million and it got routed through based on our approval hierarchies to the CFO. The CFO called up the supplier and at the same time, the supplier, funnily enough, was about to call the business and the supplier said, well, I haven't been paid in weeks. We're like, we've got outstanding AP bills. What's going on? And the CFO said, well, we've paid $330,000 to you. Like, what do you mean? You don't have the payments. And it turned out that the invoice had not only been compromised in terms of the payment details by one account digit, it had also been compromised in terms of the phone number and the $330,000 had been processed and sent to Macau. And only after a huge amount of litigation, two and a half years of litigation, were we able to recover about five and a half percent of that total total loss. Um, and it nearly sent my family organization broke, over, you know, nearly operating for 20 years as a large manufacturer and agriculture business in Western Australia. And so at that point, I was like, this is ludicrous. I have all this AI security and protection on this credit card that I spend $10 at a local gas station. I have all this smarts by Visa and MasterCard to protect that. But how come when I deal with my accounts payable process, I'm relying on manual review, like just relying on hopefully that one of the three AP people can actually pick up all that information and make sure it's correct. And so... In order to protect, protect businesses effectively, we had to digitize the process. And that's what we're going to show you today. We're going to show you how we digitize the process specifically for construction to make it streamlined and automated, but also to make sure that your business is secure and protected from mainly supply errors and mistakes. That's the most common uh, cause of leakage, but also supplier invoice impersonation and supplier fraud. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to Daniel, who's going to go through and going to show you the Acumatica side of how um, everything's created, both from a purchase order, uh, receding, and also subcontract. And then I'm going to show you the trail side of how it all connects together when the AP invoices come through via email. So over to you, Daniel. Awesome. All right. Let me share my screen here. Uh, if you will stop sharing, I believe I can do that. Yep. Perfect. All right. And if you can tell by my voice, I am not from Australia. So I'll try to go quick so we can we can listen to Adam again. He's got a much cooler accent than me. <laughs> uh, all right. So first, we're going to start with just entering a subcontract. Um, we're not going to go too in the weeds here, right? Just a, an example of kind of a subcontract you can put in the system. I like highlighting this, this copy and paste function. So I've got a subcontract that I've basically created. I'm just going to redo here and change my uh, quantity of hours, we'll say it's 150 hours this time. I brought over my unit cost for those labor hours as well. So I've got this subcontract ready to go. Um, I've actually selected the project prior. You could change it here too. So if I had another project I need to create one for, I could start that here as well. Uh, my project task, my cost code, and then the description, which it just pulled from my inventory ID. But if you wanted to give it a, a more unique description, you can. Uh, the unit of measure for this is is hours, right? I'm I'm talking about labor here. Um, so we've got our basics. We've got some retainage included. We go ahead and save this, and I'm going to remove it from hold. All right. So now I have a subcontract against a project um, that I basically can start billing on, right? And that's where Adam's going to come in and show us that really unique integration that's going to be able to find those details and link them correctly. Um, so that's the first key. And you can also upload files and attachments here if you'd like. Just a quick overview of subcontracts. All right. The next thing that we're going to do 
is create a purchase order. So I'm going to go to purchases, open up purchase orders here. I'm going to create a new one. Do my vendor here, my go-to vendor. And just what Daniel does that, everyone, when the subcontract is created uh, in the construction edition of Acumatica, you'll see that SC contract number actually feed into Trout in real time and it will match up each of the lines at a line level. I'm going to show you that both on the subcontract PO, on the general purchase order and on the, and on the purchase receipt as well. Perfect. All right. So I'm just going to do a single line here um, for an inventory item. Let's say we're stocking our inventory. We're going to order 200 of these parts. You can also do this with non-stock items if you don't need to store it and stock it. But for this example here, I've got my line item entered. I've got my quantity. The unit cost feeds in from the last unit cost for this vendor. Go ahead and remove the hold. You can have some approval processes there if you'd like. I've turned them off because demoing them and logging in as others is not a lot of fun. So we're just going to move forward with entering our PO receipt, right? So I've got my PO in here. I'm going to execute a receipt. And by default, I've told it to put in the total quantity. You could do partial receipts if you need to. And you can actually even create the bill. I'm not going to do that in this use case. A lot of times you get the receipt before you get the bill or vice versa. You need to match them, right? You need to make sure you have what you uh, are getting billed for. So in this case, we've just got the item in. I'm going to go ahead and release it. And now I have, if you go over here to... Uh, the details, we have our billing details here, which hasn't been linked yet, but Adam's going to show us that piece. My, uh, my item's been received, so it's in stock and it's ready to go and ready to be billed against. So that's the brief overview of the Acumatica side. I know the, the main point of this demo is to see the, the integration between the two. So Adam, anything else you want me to cover over here before we pass it back to you? No, it's as simple as that, guys. So the, the purchasing, the subcontracts, the receivings, all still going to happen in Acumatica based on the different teams, project managers, and things like that. The idea is that when that happens and the AP invoice is feed into trailed, I'm going to show you how it connects it all together. And it automates a lot of that. So you're not having to send it back to them. When there's variances or problems, it will flag through our approval workflow. They'll have the risk information. You're going to start to see how the pieces connect together. And then I'm going to show you how the AP bills end up back in Acumatica in this bills and adjustments section, all hyperlinked and connected together. So what I'm going to do, thank you, Daniel, for that. Perfect. That's really helpful. I'm going to now share my screen and I'm going to take you back into the trail platform for a live demonstration. Can you guys let me know when you can see that and we will kick off the demonstration. All set. Yeah, we can see it. Yep. Yeah. Lovely. So perfect. So everyone, this is the trailed in tray. So this is the top of the funnel for everything to do with accounts payable when connected in with Acumatica. And there are a couple of ways to get your supplier invoices into the system. The most common way by far is via email. So we can connect trail directly to your Outlook exchange and have the emails forwarded directly from your AP inbox directly into the trail in tray and have that automation kick off. We can also set up a unique email address, for example, strategies group at trailsoftware.com. And you can have different people out on site, whether it be different construction projects or different, you know, different engineers, um, just forward the invoices directly into the platform as being part of that whitelist. You can also upload any invoices on demand, so PDF, JPEG, PNG, and so forth, or you can even simply drag and drop the invoices into the screen. So I'm going to drop this invoice in, I'm going to process it through, and it's going to run through our data extraction and classification engine. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to show you a couple of different examples, some with POs, some with receipts, some with subcontracts, um, and some with miscellaneous invoices that don't have any of those. So let me go in and let's grab a couple of different examples here just to show you a variety of invoices. So I'm going to process all of these in the platform. What it's doing now is it's running through our data classification and um, and the data classification and, and, and engine to extract all that data and classify it. You'll notice I don't say OCR. The reason I don't say OCR is because we have built this engine from the ground up. It actually understands every single metric and field, whether it be numeric, date, field, character, and it uses machine learning to sit on top of it to get smarter and understand your business. You'll understand that as I get into the demonstration. So once these invoices have landed, they're going to automatically land in a drafts queue. And importantly here, 
it's going to show you all of the extracted data. So the invoice number, who the supplier is, which branch within Acumatica it's related to, the invoice date, the due date, the amount, and it's automatically assigned it to someone in the organization based on our pre-configured workflow engine. Now, it also shows you that they've all landed in a draft state waiting for action. Now, the really key part here is it allows you to see which invoices are PO related or which ones are not PO related. So this is an invoice from Raven Products that doesn't relate to any purchase order, no subcontract, and it's not related. It's a miscellaneous invoice. Great. Just like utilities, gas, water, rent, no problem at all. For these two invoices, I can see they're both related to a purchase order related in Acumatica, so a purchase order that's actually been raised. And I can also see that either a subcontract or a purchase receipt has been matched against it. So it's telling me here there's a three-way match or there is a two-way match between the subcontractor PO and the AP invoice. So what I can see here is I can prioritize my time. I can turn around and say, you know what? I may have examples where there's a PO, but the goods haven't yet been receipted or the subcontract hasn't been fully completed. And I can turn around and I can put this on hold. And I can say, actually, you know what? I want to put this on hold until I see this little receipt icon appear and I get a notification from Trail telling me there's a two-way or a three-way match enabled. So it's a real-time feed from what you saw from Daniel in terms of that data, connecting to the AP invoice coming through and making sure it's valid and correct. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill down into the first supplier invoice. And on the left-hand side here, you can see the original supply document that's come through. So it's really clear here as to the invoice that's come through from the supplier. You also have the ability to upload any supporting documentation. Now, both the AP and finance team and the approver can do this. So if you're an engineer out on site or a project manager, you can upload packing slips, shipping dockets, whatever you might need to as a part of the approval process. And you can store it against the AP bill, which then feeds into Acumatica. So it, again, becomes a, a document storage process for, for all of your uh, centralization needs. And then on the right hand side, you've got three key components. You've got the header level data extraction. You've got the good section with the matching to the purchase order, purchase receipts, and also the subcontract POs. You've got the activities log here with a tracking history and audit, audit capability. And you've got the pre-populated coding. So the GL allocations, the sub-account allocations, and who the invoice has been assigned to. So I want to talk about each one of these components one by one because they're really important as to the way the system works. So at the header level, you can see it's pulled out all of the relevant invoice, supplier, and pricing information from the, from the document. What it's done is it's pulled out key things like the invoice number, and hopefully you can all see the big red box now around the invoice number on the screen. If I hover down, as I was explaining before, it's actually enabled every single field on this document as a selectable field because it's not just, it's no template learning. It's actually using AI to identify what is a string, what is a character, what is a date, what is a numeric field, and it's making them available for selection. So for example, if the invoice total came in and the invoice total was picked up on the total amount of the invoice, which it is, and actually for my business specifically, I don't want to pay on the total amount. I actually want to pay this supplier on the amount due or the amount outstanding. I can now see that red, big red box has moved. I can select that part of the document and it's going to use machine learning to cache it and memorize it for the next supplier invoice. So without getting too technical, it uses multi-tenant learning to understand what that supplier invoice looks, across, looks like across our entire platform. For example, Walmart. How many times have we seen a Walmart invoice across the 570 customers that use the platform? Many, many, many times, right? So you're going to get a higher field population rate for Walmart than you would for, for example, a first invoice that's never been seen on the platform before. But then not only on top of that, you're getting single tenant machine learning. It's understanding any adjustments you're making and it's populating that for you moving forward. So it's understanding specifically within your business, your construction business, how you're operating and dealing with your suppliers. And the best way to explain that is generally on the first supplier invoice ever seen in the system, you're generally looking at about an 88% field population rate based on the, the data extraction and the, and the multi-tenant learning. By the second supplier invoice, you're looking at 99% plus accuracy. You're looking at hyper automation. And the reason you're looking at hyper automation is the business, the, the system has learned what makes sense for your business and that supplier and it's populating it moving forward. And you're going to see more of this as we go through. So as, as we say, the, the system is po populated or pulled out the purchase order number on the document. It could pull out the purchase order number or the subcontract number. It really doesn't matter. It's pulled out the relevant. If you've got projects and you're allocating particular projects or project tasks, they can always be changing. If they're not, you can also search for a project name or project code. So for example, project code 74, or maybe, maybe it's project code 78. It's going to allocate the relevant project and project task to that and cost code to that particular AP invoice. 
It's also populated the invoice total and due date off the document. If you've got pre-configured payment terms in Acumatica for that supplier, it's going to cross-reference those payment terms with the due date on the document and say, is this supplier asking for payment within seven days? When your normal payment terms are 30 days, it's going to flag a cash flow issue here and actually flag a red calendar to say there's a discrepancy between your payment terms with what you've contractually agreed with the supplier and what they've actually invoiced you in terms of terms. And you're going to see more of these security checks and balances in the next couple of seconds. So um, the other thing it does is it links through the relevant supplier. Um, so it's matching the supplier on the invoice with a supplier in your master data in Acumatica. Now, let's just say for argument's sake, similar to my family business, say your email, uh, was, say your supplier invoice was compromised. Say it came through from an IP address in Nigeria and it had its payment details compromised. The system's going to analyze that document as it comes into the business and the email metadata. It's going to flag that the payment details actually detected on the document and where it's come from look unusual. It's going to say the payment details have changed. They're different to what's in our Acumatica supplier master data for that vendor. And they're even different to what we've historically transacted with that supplier over the past 12 months based on previous ACH payments. The system is always looking for these anomalies, whether it be bank details changes, excess supplier charges, duplicate invoices, duplicate payments, inactive government registrations. We plumb into government data agencies looking for tax registrations, business active business registrations. We're trying to make sure that the supplier invoices that you are receiving are correct and in line with how you should be dealing with your suppliers. So this is just some of the security checks and balances that happen throughout the entire platform as we go through this process. So now that this invoice has come through, it's extracted all the data, it's classified all the information, I'm ready to go. Now, there's, there's the part here that where I want to show you it's really important where we have the systematic two-way and three-way matching process. So as you saw, Daniel raise that purchase order um, for that item in Acumatica. The system has automatically pulled out the purchase order number off the invoice. And it's telling me in real time that there are three purchase receipts linked to that purchase order in Acumatica. So with a click of a button, it's going to bring in each of those purchase order lines. It shows me the PO number, the quantity, the unit cost, the receipt number, the quantity, the unit cost. And it's also going to show any part number or subcontract number if it's related to a subcontract PO. It's going to pull through the relevant description, quantity, unit cost, and all the pre-populated coding. So the branch allocations, the GL allocations, the project task and cost codes, all off the relevant purchase order and purchase receipt. Now, let's just say, for example, the supplier invoice came through for, I don't know, $3,200, right? But the invoice was, sorry, the, the purchase order and purchase receipt was actually processed for $2,200. Or so the subcontract has only been partially fulfilled for $2,200, but they've sent you the full subcontract amount for $3,200. It's going to flag that $1,000 variance here. There's two, there's two options here. We can automatically round it back to the PO owner in Acumatica based on our pre-configured workflow engine. Or I can turn around here and say, you know what? I can investigate it as finance and turn around and say, hey, Karen, uh, massive PPV on this. Uh, can you check the contract or warehouse? Question mark, question mark. And Karen's going to get that notification straight away in a centralized digital view. I can allocate this invoice to Karen for her to check it out. I can put the invoice on hold in a pending queue and I can save it as a draft until, until Karen actually has the time to action it. So essentially here, it allows you to route the PPV and deal with it accordingly. But importantly, it's checking again from a security point of view that what you're paying those suppliers is in line with the services you've actually received, in line with the work that's being completed on the site and in line with the inventory that you may have ordered or receded on the site because you actually, it's part of that relevant project. In this case, though, the invoice has come through. There's no variance to the purchase order, the purchase suite, and or the subcontract. I'm comfortable. I'm going to go ahead and submit this invoice. Before I do, I want this is you know this is an unusual case where everything's perfect. It come in, it comes in, it's matched. Great. I don't know how many Acumatica businesses we deal with where they deal with partial fulfillment or even multiple purchase orders or subcontracts on a particular supplier invoice, but I would say a lot. So I do want to explain this. If you raise a purchase order. Um, for 10 items, three of them come in on one invoice and then um, seven of them come in on another invoice, Trailwood is going to automatically match that at a line level. And so what I want to explain here is we have a real-time lookup into the PO and receipt module in Acumatica as well as this con the subcontract construction module. 
And essentially here, it's going to show you all the associated purchase order and receipt lines for that particular supplier based on the purchase order number pulled off the document. And what it's going to do is it's going to display and link all of those purchase order lines at a line level. So for example, let's just say this invoice came through for go to market services and printing, right? And the advertising came through on another supplier invoice five weeks later. The system's going to automatically, when this invoice comes in, it's going to match up the purchase order line. It's going to say, yes, the first two purchase order lines match. They've been receipted accordingly. There's your receipt date. And it's going to match each of the line level detail on not only the PO number matching, but also the description, quantity, unit cost, and total. And it's going to match on the same description, quantity, unit cost, and total. And it's going to link that through and push the AP bill into Acumatica but it's not going to close out the purchase order or the subcontract if it was to do with a subcontract. The reason being is you've still got $500 of, of work or um, of, of, of inventory remaining that hasn't been receded. So the next invoice you receive five weeks later with the same purchase order number for advertising, it's going to then link in the last remaining purchase order line automatically, again, matching on the purchase order number, description, quantity, unit cost, and total. And it's going to populate that last invoice line a purchase order line, and it's going to close out that purchase order in Acumatica, given that it's now been fulfilled. So the system allows you to deal with multiple invoices to a single purchase order that's fulfilled over a period of time, or even if you need to deal with multiple purchase order numbers that relate to the single supplier invoice, or even if you've got a purchase order and a subcontract, it'll allow you to deal with that as well. So maybe line items from 638 and 636 appear on the one invoice. I can deal with that within a single screen. And if you think about that as, as an AP clerk, you're not having to run around, speak to the project coordinator or speak to the site engineer and say, I've got this invoice here. I can't see the subcontract in Acumatica or it doesn't look like the services have been fully completed. What percentage of them have been completed? What do I actually pay? They can quite easily within this screen see what purchase orders have been raised, what subcontracts are available, what's been receded, what percentage has been completed in terms of retainage. And they can communicate centrally with the project site to be able to deal with this before the supply gets paid. So at this point, I know we've gone into a lot of detail around that, but it's one of our key features. So essentially here, the invoice has come in, it's extracted all the data, it's matched to the purchase order, purchase receipt or subcontract. Um, there's no variance. I'm going to go ahead and submit this invoice. Now, to this first example, what you're going to see is the supplier invoice is actually going to auto approve. The reason being is there's a three-way match between the purchase order and the purchase receipt, and it's detected it as a low-risk invoice. So this is a low-risk invoice. There's no issues with this one. This one can go directly into Acumatica for payment. So then in the essence of speed, I just want to show you how quick this process becomes in the next supplier invoice. So you can see here, this invoice has come through from a normal supplier of ours, um, Acuity Accounting and Advisory. Again, importantly, uh, it's extracted all the data and information from the document. Again, if I needed to allocate the relevant project, I can do that. Say project 78, there's my project allocation. It's also memorized the GL coding and sub account for that particular supplier. Again, using the integration with Acumatica machine learning sitting on top of it. So it memorizes and understands your adjustments, populating that by default. Again, it's telling me there is one associated purchase order receipt line against this PO. I can see this laptop has landed in the warehouse and it's inventory related. There's my part number. I can see when it was receipted, the PO line, there's no variance. I'm comfortable. I'm going to submit this invoice. That's how quick that automation process is, whether it be matching to a purchase order or a purchase receipt or a subcontract with partial retainage that needs to be paid. And I'm now going to remove the hold on this one. In terms of your non-PO related invoices, so anything that's dealing with um, miscellaneous invoices, you know, invoices that don't have a PO and may need to be allocated to different GL codes and things like that, you've got the ability here to still process them in trailed. You can see the invoice that's come through. It's extracted all the data again at a header level. Um, if I needed to read these lines and allocate them to different GLs, it's really easy. I just click add from invoice and it's going to automatically, automatically extract each of the lines off the document, including the quantities, the unit costs, um, the descriptions, even populate the relevant coding off the lines. Because it's what it's doing is it's defaulting to the lines at the header level in terms of the key coding. I could turn around here and say, you know what? I want one of these lines to actually go to my freight expenses GL code. Done. It's read from the lines. It's classified it accordingly. I haven't had to key in any data. It's all sorted. So now I'm going to go ahead again and I'm going to submit that invoice. Now, in this particular example, it is going to go through our approval workflow because there's no match to a subcontract, there's no match to a purchase order, and there's no match to a receipt. 
So actually this needs to go through an approval process and it's a medium risk warning. So it's telling me there is an issue here that I need to be aware of before this gets processed into Acumatica. And then there's the last example, and this has become more and more common as we're seeing with more construction sites where you receive invoices from your suppliers or your subcontractors, and they've got like 20 or 30 documents in the same supplier invoice. And so, you know, this is an invoice from Avis where we've got three separate um, Avis car rentals that have come through and been scanned through from a printer. Someone's walked across the printer, they've scanned it through, they've emailed it directly into the trailed in tray. Trailed has recognized there's three separate invoices here. And it's run automatically through our splitting and recommendation engine. So what it's doing here is it's automatically recognizing that there are three separate invoices within this single PDF file, identifying the different invoice numbers and the different page numbers. So even if this is scanned through or sent through on site, the system will automatically identify it via email and split that invoice out accordingly. So what you're going to have now is instead of having to save each one individually, save it, enter it, save it, enter it, save it, enter it, the system is automatically processing it, splitting it and making it ready for either your review process, your three-way matching process, or pushing it directly into Acumatica based on zero variance. So what you're going to see now is each of these invoices will land in the tray. Obviously, it'll have the same supplier, but it'll have different invoice dates, different due dates, different amounts. Um, and you'll start to see those landing now. The first one's just come through. Um, and it obviously have the, the relevant information here. Here you go. It's got different uh, different amounts, different due dates, everything like that. So what we've gone through here, guys, is we've gone through all the different sorts of invoice combinations, PO-related invoices, non-PO-related invoices, three-way matching, two-way matching, and how do you deal with those variance controls? Now, in terms of your exceptions, so invoices that have a problem against the subcontract or have an issue against the, the PO or the PO receipt, um, essentially they're going to go through an approval workflow. And this approval workflow is essentially, instead of having to have a look at 100 invoices a week as an approver, it's saying these are the three that really need your attention. These are the three invoices that are quite problematic and need to be reviewed. So I can get an email notification to say, hey, Adam, you've got three invoices in your queue here. Um, these are the suppliers they're from. This is when they're due. This is how much they're for. And they've automatically been assigned to me based on some key rules. And I can see the risk information. So I can prioritize what I'm looking at. I'm now going to drill down as an approver and I can simply and easily see the supplier invoice that I need to approve on site. I'm sitting there. I've got the invoice in front of me. I've got it allocated by finance because there is something that I need to look at. If I'm out on site and I need to upload something, maybe a packing slip, a shipping docket, a PO, um, uh, anything, I can upload it against the AP invoice and have that sent back to finance and into Acumatica. From a security point of view, it is telling me here it's a low risk invoice. It's telling me it's a low risk invoice. It's well within my normal supplier average from a security point of view. You know what? I'm completely comfortable with this one. I can see the activity log and tracking history. So I know exactly where this invoice has been. I'm comfortable. I'm going to approve this invoice and get it exported to Acumatica. So then what it's going to do is it's going to automatically drop me to the next invoice in my queue. And this is an example of a high risk problematic invoice. This is one I absolutely want to pay attention to. It's come through as high risk because it's telling me the supplier invoice is for nearly $3,000. When our normal supplier average over the past 12 months has never been more than $1,345. So this is a material increase in excess supplier charges that's outside the normal bell curve and standard deviation when dealing with this supplier. Also, it's telling me there's a payment details alert on the actual in, on the actual invoice. So, you know, I've got a note here from my colleague saying that this looks like a problem. You know what? I'm uncomfortable with this. I'm going to reject it. I'm going to send it back to finance. Is either a problem with pricing, which I can see quite clearly. Maybe it's even a compromised invoice. I want to say, looks odd. Can you please check with the supplier accordingly? And what the system is doing here from a security perspective, it's embedding that same level of banking security that you expect every day on your credit card, that same level of infrastructure to make sure that if you receive something that looks unusual um, or a suspect, you know, if you, you know, your card gets stolen and misused at you know, a gas station in Vancouver at three o'clock in the morning, Daniel gets an instant email notification and text message to say, hey, this is, you know, $10 transaction looks suspicious. Do you want to approve the transaction or do you want to suspend the card? When it comes to your accounts payable process, essentially we're just relying on our finance team to do a diligent job. And sometimes it's really, really hard, especially when you're dealing with the sort of volume of invoices that you deal with in construction. You've got handwritten invoices, you've got stuff all over the place, sub 
contracts, you've got POs, receipts, there's stuff everywhere. And so what the system is doing is it's not replacing their role. It's giving them uh, the tools of AI to make sure that they're getting that same level of security and protected from mainly supply errors and mistakes, but also potential fraud. And so at this point, I'm going to reject this invoice. It's going to go back to finance and it's going to sit in an investigation queue. It's going to drop me down to the next invoice in my queue. And I just want to quickly highlight here that the platform is completely agnostic. I can't tell you how many construction customers we have that use the approvals on the go. They can see straight away the risk information. They get a push notification on their mobile phone to do their approvals. Um, they can simply and easily in this example, say it's a new supplier. And that's the reason it's come up as medium risk is it's a new supplier. We've never dealt with this supplier before based on a history. And they've asked for unusually urgent payment. They've asked for payment within 24 hours when our normal supplier payment terms with this vendor is usually 30 days. So that's unusual. So between the payment terms and it being a new supplier, um, you know what, I'm uncomfortable with this, but I want to pop a note in for Karen here and say, Karen, uh, can you please check this out? And Karen's going to deal with that. And I can even upload, you know, download the original invoice if I need to on my mobile, just get a better view. Or I can even you know, upload supporting documents. But you know, at this point, I actually want Karen to check this out. I'm going to allocate this to Karen. It's going to shoot off to her and she's going to be able to deal with that accordingly. Now I've dealt with the three or four invoices in my queue for the week. I've removed the other 95 that didn't need to be looked at because they've been matched to the purchase order, the purchase receipt or the subcontract. Um, I've got a whole bunch of my approval time back and I can go back to my daily activities and the finance team have got a whole bunch of their data entry time back and processing time back because everything is centralized and available through the automation platform. In terms of the approval workflow, you can make it as automated or as, or as, as, as flexible as you like. Essentially here, we have delegated rules of authority in terms of the approval mapping. Essentially, what you can do is you can create approval rules as to where the invoices go and how they get there based on key information in Acumatica. So if I want to turn around here, I've created an approval rule here, and this is specific to all invoices being over $100,000 must go to Strata. And I've selected which branch in Acumatica that's related to, to make it very specific. And I've actually added these key conditions. Now, I've said where the invoice is greater than $100,000 and it relates to this particular supplier and it relates to this particular GL code, it needs to go to Strata. When Strata approves it, it's going to go into my second level of approval matrix and it's going to get routed to Mark for final sign-off. Now, in construction, a lot of the time, what I'm going to be wanting to do is allocate it to a project manager or allocate it to a job or a project. So what I have the ability to do here is these fields are based on key fields in Acumatica. So I can route the information based on supplier, GL code, even the PO owner. So whoever raised the purchase order or a subcontract PO, if there's a purchase price variance, always send it back to the person that raised the PO in Acumatica. I can route it based on project, sub-account, project task, or a mix of them. So it gives me the ability to have things routed automatically to the right division, to the right person, to the right department, based on key depth of criteria within the Acumatica ecosystem. And on top of that, I have the ability to set up multi-level approvals up to seven levels. So I can turn around here and say, actually, at the second level of approval, I want two levels, right? I want not only just Mark to review it, but I also want um, you know Tracy to review it or Shrata to review it. Or well, maybe not Shrata because she's just reviewed it. So maybe not her. We probably want Tracy. So there you go. You've got two levels of approval within the second level. So essentially here, what I'm saying is we can configure whatever you like in terms of automated routing. It's all pretty simple and out of the box. Once the invoices have gone through that automation matching process and those approval workflows for the exceptions, essentially the finance team have complete visibility as to all of the documents across the organization and where those invoices are sitting. They can see whether they're on hold or urgent or waiting, waiting you know, additional review. They can see who they've been sent into the business by, so either through the AP inbox automatically or by people on site. They can see what branch they relate to in Acumatica and where the invoices sit in their life cycle. So whether they be pending review, you know, this invoice is, you know, outstanding. Come on, Karen, I want to mark it as urgent and nudge you along. She's going to get an email notification accordingly. Or maybe I want to look at my investigation queue. Adam sent this back. I wonder why. It's high risk, but I wonder why. Okay, due to incorrect pricing information, it actually got sent into the business by Mark, then assigned to Adam for review and Adam's uncomfortable with it. This is why Adam's uncomfortable due to the excess supply charges and the payment details problem. You know what? Oh, it's cool. I get it. I'm going to follow up with that accordingly. Thanks, Adam. 
And, you know, most of the time I'm going to be dealing with my approved invoices. So these are the ones that have gone through the systematic two-way matching to the subcontract or PO and or the three-way matching to the PO and the receipt. Um, I'm going to be able to select these individually if I need to or grab them in bulk and export them directly across into Acumatica. We also have an auto configuration that can assess any approved invoice by status and say auto export them directly to Acumatica if they've been approved, either by the matching process or by the approval process so that you don't have to intervene at this particular level. It just goes straight into Acumatica. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go into the Acumatica system and you should all be very familiar with this. I'm just going to go into the bills and adjustments screen here. And what you should be able to see is the AP bills directly landing into Acumatica. So what's going to happen here is they're going to land in an open release state. And the reason they're going to land in an open release state is because they've already gone through the automation, the matching, the approval workflow, and the security checks. There's nothing else to be done here. Essentially, it's going to send through the actual PDF document. So if I click on here, you can see the actual PDF document and supporting information from the construction site, the approvers, is going to be stored centrally. If I click on this, it's now going to open up that original document that's been sent through. So that's all stored and archived and attached in Acumatica. Acumatica. It's also going to send through any of the activities and notations. So from a tracking and audit history, you've got complete visibility as to where that invoice has gone, who's touched it and who's dealt with it. You've got a couple of custom fields on the trailed security and risk score and the trailed approver. Now, let's just go into an example of an invoice um, where we have had a three-way match, for example. This is an invoice that's come through from trailed for Beta Airlines. It's come through as a low risk invoice and it's been auto approved based on the match of the purchase order and purchase receipt. If I drill down into my supplier invoice, what you're going to see here is Trail has not only populated all the key information that's normally keyed in manually, so the supplier name, the terms, the, the amount, um, the invoice date, the due date, the withholding tax amount. It's also linked through the relevant information at a line level, so the branch allocation, the inventory ID, the GL code, the sub account, the projects, the tax category. But most importantly, it's actually hyperlinked in the original purchase order that was raised in Acumatica, same with the PO, a subcontractor PO in the construction area and the purchase receipt. So if I click on this PO, what you're going to see is Trailed has automatically closed it out based on that integration, that linking. And you'll see it's now closed out that purchase order and it's fulfilled it. So if I look at my PO history, I can see that that PO has been released and the items have been receipted. So now you've got the AP invoice in from Trailed. It's gone through the automation, the matching process, the security checks. It's linked it all together and it's ready for batching. So at this point, everything's ready to create your payment batch. So whether it be an ACH batch, whether it be a check run, whether it be a wire transfer, you can come in here. You can go down into your prepare payments area. You can release your payments and you can generate your payment file. The minute you generate your payment file in Acumatica, it's going to automatically feed that payment file into the payment section in Trailed. And it's going to show you that payment batch reference number. So it's going to tell you, is it a check run? Is it an EFT run? Is it an ACH run? What sort of payment batch is it? And this is where you've got an executive review. So at this point, I can see for this particular payment batch that's come through from Acumatica, this is the batch reference ID. It's telling me it's a payment, you know, the payment type is EFT. And it's also showing me the payment batch value is for $73,000. Now, the batch has been completed in Acumatica, but it's still waiting final approval and sign off in trail before the payment can be executed. So what I can see here from an executive point of view is I can see there's two supplier payments here, and I can see the payment details for those suppliers. I can see that they're both being verified as suppliers by trail during supplier onboarding. So essentially we're checking to make sure that supplier is legitimate and in line with how everyone else pays that supplier across the economy. Do they have a social online digital footprint? Do they have, you know, active business registrations? You know, are their payment details correct? All those sorts of things. And then we've got the payment values for each of those supplier payments that we're about to process, okay? So you can see there's two payments of $30,000 each or so that make up the $73,000 payment. Now, the really key part here is I've got a 12-month payment trend. So I can instantly see, I normally pay DCT New South Wales approximately $10,000 a month on average. This payment's for nearly $40,000. So it's nearly three times higher than the normal supplier average over a 12-month period. So I actually really want to know what invoices that relates to before I go ahead and just pay this bill. So what I can do is I can actually drill down and I can see all the invoices that have come through trailed that make up that $39,000 supplier payment. 
I can see what invoice they, they relate to, what the risk score was when they came in, who approved it. Was it matched to the subcontract? Was it matched to the purchase order? Was it matched to the receipt? Um, uh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. We're still seeing your tray, um, your, your Acumatica screen. Oh, you can't see you can't see the um the trail oh, intro. Seeing trail. No, I'm sorry. Okay, thanks, Karen. No worries. Let me see if I can go back here. At first I thought it was me, but then two other people let me know. <laughs> okay, can you guys see it now? Now we're there. So you might okay. want to start that bit again. Let's get uh -huh. let's go back. So just just recap. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, so once the payment batch is generated in Acumatica it's going to feed down into this payments tab in trail. And essentially this is where you're going to have your executive review. It's going to show you whether it's a manual check run that's been created in Acumatica, an EFT payment or an ACH payment or a wire transfer. I'm just going to drill down into one of these supplier invoices, uh, sorry, supplier payments, batch payments. And it's going to show me the batch reference number from Acumatica. It's going to show me the payment method. So whether it's an EFT payment, an ACH, a wire, whatever it might be from Acumatica, it's going to show me the batch value of $73,000. It's going to say, yes, the batch has been completed in Acumatica, but it's still waiting final sign-off and approval in Trailed. And it shows me when the batch was generated. Importantly here, it's going to show me not only the two supplier payments, that the two suppliers that I'm about to pay, it's going to show me whether those suppliers are verified or not. As I mentioned during supplier onboarding, we do a bunch of validation, both to government data checks that we have, as well as you know checking that supplier holistically. We can see the payment amount for each of those supplier payments within the batch, both being about $30,000 to make up that $73,000 payment. And I can see the full 12 month bell curve. So I can see here instantly, we normally pay this supplier about $10,000 a month on average. And this supplier in the supplier payments nearly $40,000. So over the 12 month period, this is nearly three times higher than what our normal trend is in terms of payments. So I want to understand what is actually making up that $39,000 payment because today you have no visibility on it. It's just a batch file saying $73,000 and here's a payment one and here's payment two for X amount, but you can't see the invoices. So essentially, what trail does is it links it all together if you kick this drop down it's going to show you instantly the three invoices that make up that thirty nine thousand dollar payment it's going to show you the risk score on each of those invoices when they were processed in trailed who was accountable for the approval whether it be three-way match two-way matched or or approved by someone in the workflow um the approval date and it's even going to show you the automation value that went through trailed what actually landed in Acumatica and what's been generated in your payment file. So if someone internally bypasses the trailed automation and security process and keys a bill directly into Acumatica, it's going to flag that variant saying it skipped the approval and security process in trailed. Um, and same with if someone goes and manipulates something between Acumatica and the payment file. So there's a number of insider fraud and checks and balances as well. But at this point, I'm looking at this $4,675 um, supplier invoice that was approved by Glenn, and I can see it was high risk, and it's inflated the in, it inflated the oversupply payment number, and I want to know what that was all about. So I can drill down here, and I can instantly, from this payment, exec, payment review dashboard, I can see the invoice that Glenn approved. I can see the purchase order, purchase receipt or subcontract that it's linked to. I can see the uploaded and supporting documentation. I can see the risk score. All of the information is there for me. And you know what? I'm turning around going, actually, I'm not comfortable with this. I'm going to tag Glenn and say, you know, Glenn, this invoice that you approved, did you actually look at it? Because it seems an issue. Um, can we put this particular supplier invoice payment on hold? And we can pause that at this point. In the next supplier payment, I'm looking at this the, this payment to DCTWA, and I can see there's you know 25 invoices that relate to this $33,000 payment, and if it's actually pointing out the needle in the haystack. It's analysing each one of them, and it's telling me this $140 is the actual problem out of this $33,000 payment, and it's come up as medium risk. So I can drill down here, and I can instantly see that it's come up as medium risk. Because at the point the invoice came in, there was actually a purchase price variance, a, a small amount, but there was a purchase price variance and it was outside our variance threshold, but that's actually been approved. So you know what? I'm comfortable with that now. I'm happy with all of this. I'm going to approve this payment batch and I'm going to get it execute. I can either execute the payment via trailed or I can download the payment file directly from trailed. If you're printing checks, it will send you through to Acumatica to actually get that check batch printed. Um, or depending on if you're using the trail pay product, you can be processing the payments directly through our platform, whether it be check, wire, ACH, or virtual cards. 
So that is most of the system from the AP automation, from invoice in all the way through the matching, the workflow approval system, um, the exception management, and the obviously the payment review, reconciliation, and execution. Um, I guess at this point, what I'm going to do is just toggle back to my presentation. Um, can you guys still see that, Karen, now that I've gone back to the presentation deck? No, no sir. We're still on your trailed screen. Ah. <laughs> okay. Zoom doesn't like me today. <laughs> okay. Can you see that now? Now we do. Lovely. So that's the overall demonstration. Obviously, uh, we love to do personalized demos with your invoices, load them in in real time, show you how it matches to your POs, your receipts, your subcontracts, um, show you the retainage and capability in terms of payments. Um, so feel free to, to reach out to us if you do want a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo. Um, but in, in, terms of the, uh, in terms of the presentation, I do want to highlight what some of our customers do have to say out there about the solution. Um, we've got customers from all different sorts of industries here. Um, but essentially, you know, everyone from Jordan who says, you know, he's saved huge amounts of hours in manual processing, matching, and and obviously making his business more secure has been a, a secure has been a real key benefit for him when it comes to trailed. Um, all the way through to Gerald, who you know says it took him less than a week to get trailed in configured, integrated, rolled out and have the have the team using it. And they could really see the, the benefits from both an automation and a security point of view straight away. So um, jump onto our YouTube page, have a bit of a look about what our customers have to say about us. We have a number of customer testimonials on there. Um, and if you do want to speak to a reference customer, um, we have hundreds throughout North America. We're more than happy um, to connect you with a site using Acumatica and you can get a real uh, live experience from them about what they've experienced with the solution. Nothing better than, than speaking with a customer when, when looking at, you know, what is the integration like? How does it connect? How efficient is it? Those sorts of things. And we obviously want you to get the, the value out of it. So now what I want to do is hand over to Karen and Selena for the Q&A process. I'll open up uh, the room to any questions and uh, we can go through those now. Okay. Um, I don't have any actual queued up questions that we had is there anybody that would like to ask a question that hadn't put it put it in the either chat or the q a okay it looks like you answered everything excellent well awesome. oh no, it looks have we got one there looks like we have a q a says i'm good for now okay thanks tyler <laughs> Great. Um, awesome. Well, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to reach out to Daniel, Selena, the team at Strategies Group, or myself and Karen. Uh, we'd love to help you guys out. If you're still you know, dealing with manual invoice entry, matching and things like that, and you want to digitize and streamline your process and make it more secure, we're absolutely there to help you with that. Um, Trail does prove a, a really strong ROI and business case for, for paying itself back in sort of the first three months of adoption. So I promise you that you will absolutely get the benefit from the from the platform. Um, and if you don't, it's a month to month contract. You can always throw it away. We have a 99 and a half percent retention rate. So once customers use it, they don't usually ever let it go. Um, if anything, they say to us, can you do it on the AR side? So um, feel free to reach out to us. And we really appreciate you coming out this time of your, your afternoon to spend some, uh, some time evaluating Acumatica and also trailed.